Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Evil Salesman Podcast. It's your host, Nikesh, here today. And unfortunately, Satish is not with us. Now, don't worry, nothing bad happened to him. Uh, he's just out busy doing a few things, taking care of a few things. Uh, but we won't miss him too much because we have a very special guest here today with us um, that's going to you know, help you guys take your sales to the next level. Now, before I go ahead and introduce our guest for today, um, I want to just let you guys know that if you want, you know, more of these sales tips, more of these advices, these tricks that, uh, you know, we've been doing and you want to hear from, you know, more uh, guests, more gurus, then go ahead and click that subscribe button, whether you're on, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Our Heart Radio, YouTube, wherever you're at. Go ahead, click that subscribe button. It's completely free. And this way, you know, you'll be notified and you won't miss out on our next best amazing thing that's going to come out. So go ahead and click on that subscribe button. Now, uh, let's not waste any more time. Let me go ahead and introduce our guest for today. And he is Scott Allen. Hey there, Scott. How's it going? Hi, Nikesh. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Okay, awesome. So Scott's joining us all the way from Australia. Um, so it's it's morning time there, right, Scott? Yeah, it is. It's about 8 a.m. my time at present. Okay. okay, awesome, awesome. So we're actually in Dallas, Texas, for the ones that didn't know, and it's 3 p.m. our time. So it's pretty amazing that we're able to communicate like this. Now, um, yeah, yeah, so... Uh, awesome. So Scott, uh, you just had a new book that just came out. Uh, it was titled seven figure sales skills selling to the modern customers. Um, and I have to say, I read the book, Satish read the book, he recommended me the book. And, you know, we both highly, highly recommend it to anybody listening that wants to take their sales skills to the next level, you want to be a master in this game, then you have to check out Scott's book. Um, so, Scott, for the people that don't know who you are, um, that might have not heard about your book, could you just go ahead and explain you know, who you are, what you do, uh, what this book is about, and what motivated you to write this book? Yeah, of course. Thanks, Nikesh. And thank you for the kind words in relation to the in, in relation to the book. It's got some um, some very good early reviews as well. But look, with that being said, for, for your listeners who, who don't know who I am at this stage, um, my background is uh, about 25 years in sales, business development and operations. So I've had the good fortune in my career today to work across a, a number of industries, mainly selling to, I guess, what I would refer to as the C-suite or at executive level, um, primarily in the B2B space. In the last 15 years or so, I've been spent primarily in the outsourcing and customer management field. And the businesses that I've worked for have uh, have targeted myself to, to come on board and I've had the good opportunity to work with uh, large uh, scale existing businesses. I've been tasked to to work with a number of startups in the in the field that I've taken to, to great heights, which I'm very thankful for. But effectively my, my day to day role for the last 15 years or so has been to approach, I guess, blue chip clients um, at very, very senior executive levels and convince them of my company's services and, and transition their their customer management uh, function within their business to the uh, to the outsourced vendors that I've had the good opportunity to, to, to work for. So with that being the case, I guess over the, the better part of my career to date, I've sold somewhere in the vicinity of $500 million worth of primarily services but products and, and services and I guess to, to your question in relation to the to the book itself I think after a good 25 years within the industry I've, uh, I've had the good fortune to accumulate quite a lot of knowledge from running my own businesses and working with uh, working with some of these blue chip clients that I thought was quite frankly about time to to put on paper I'm an avid reader myself and, and I've had, uh, had the opportunity to read a, a number of prominent sales books over the the, the years and what I have noticed in the last couple of years is that there's been a big shift in, in consumer behavior and I didn't think a lot of sales books were, were really targeting 
what I would refer to as the modern customer and how to, to approach them from a sales perspective. So that was the impetus for me to write the book. It took about 12 months to, to put all my thoughts and, and uh, feelings from, um, from pen to paper, so to speak. And as I said, it was released uh, a couple of months ago and, and so far so good. Okay, awesome. That that sounds really good, Scott. And, you know, like you said, all over 25 years in sales. Um, that's a lot of sales experience. You know, I'm pretty sure you've you've seen it all. Um, and I think, you know, I, when I was doing some of my research and talking to some people that, you know, have read your book and some other people that know who you are and what you are in the industry, a lot of them, you know, said that you're, you're kind of like their sales guru. Um, so I would like to pick your brain a little bit and let our listeners, yeah, let our listeners know, hey, like, okay, so you can do this with sales or do that with sales. So, um, Scott, my first, my first question would be, let's say that uh, me or somebody else, they're starting, uh, they're very beginners in sales. They got their first sales job, whatever it may be, but their first sales job, what does that person, you know, he or she need to do so that they can be successful? Well, uh, as broad a question as that is, that's that's something that obviously needs to be uh, addressed from a beginner's perspective, I guess. So, what I would what I would probably first ask um, is, depending on the industry or depending on the type of uh, sales environment that this particular individual is working in, I think to address the needs of the modern customer more than ever. It's not just as simple as here's a, it's not Wolf of Wall Street. There's, there's no, here's a phone list to make as many cold calls as possible. That, that, that just quite frankly doesn't work with, um, with customers in the same way that it might have used to. So the first thing that I would suggest is, as part of what I refer to as my pacer methodology system, is for new salespeople to build a platform. And what I mean by building a platform is really before they start talking to customers and wasting their their time through monotonous and ongoing cold calls is via their own business and via their own research to get an understanding of the modern customer in terms of where they fit within their particular company or industry's buying cycle, get clear on their messaging and make sure that any conversations that they have with potential new prospects, quite frankly, come with some form of personalization. So I guess to simplify that even more, um, you really do need, you really do need to, um, uh, I guess, get clear on your messaging, and making sure that when you do speak with prospects, that you're adding genuine commercial value and insight, as opposed to, I guess, what I would call uh, word diarrhoea and just spitting out everything that you think a, a customer wants to know, and probably ask more questions than you're going to be giving answers. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I would agree with that too. Uh, I think every, you know, industry is different. Every customer you're going to deal with is different. But if you understand the customer, um, then, you know, sales becomes much easier. If you understand their problems, their needs, their wants. And I think you can agree with that, right? You look de de definitely, and as I said, it's um, it it's it's a new world out there as far as being able to interact with customers. We have a number of tools, data, and and um, uh, prospecting abilities available to us, um, but it really does come down to understanding the the customer, and quite frankly, ask them some questions, some pertinent questions, and then provide commercial insight to those particular prospects, and you'll be surprised how quickly that your sales career can move forward. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Um, so my next question for you, Scott, would be, uh, what do you think the number one tool in sales uh, that people are not utilizing to their full ability? Look, in my opinion, there's, there's, as I mentioned a minute ago, there's now, I guess, a number of sales and automation tools, CRMs and the like that um, technology has continued to provide us. But I think one tool that, although it's talked about quite often, is still heavily underutilized is social media. And depending whether you're in the B2C space or the B2B space, so what I like to call the H2H -H space, human to human, I think the likes of Facebook and, and LinkedIn and the ability to connect with customers at all stages within their buyer cycle um, has a real opportunity for us as salespeople to connect with prospects like never before. I totally agree. And that kind of leads into uh, my next question. So in your book that you talk a lot about, um, you know, using LinkedIn to drive more sales like you kind of just did. 
uh, now. Uh, but when I log into LinkedIn these days, I, you know, get bombarded with so many messages. Uh, you know, I would say almost three to five messages a day of someone pitching me something that they're selling. So, um, you know, in this world and in this crowded space, uh, what would you recommend that somebody do uh, to grab somebody's attention and kind of stand out from all these messages that they're receiving? That's that's exactly what I also encounter on a day-to-day basis. It's not unusual for me to receive a similar amount of messages where without any personalization, without any knowledge of who I am or what my needs are, I literally just get pitched a standard template that they probably send to multiple people at scale and saying, here's my company and here's what we do, can we talk? And quite frankly, I'm sure like you and many others that might be listening, pretty much let that um, let that message just sit there and is barely ever responded to. So when I'm referring to social media, there's, I guess, in the digital and social selling space, there are some tactics that can be used to utilize that those will all of those platforms a lot better than most are at the moment. So that's why I'm suggesting it's underutilized. So as an example, um, like any other tool, you really need, do need to provide value first. So pitching or, or, or offering some form of um, sales presentation or proposal should become significantly further down your list as far as engaging with these potential um, prospects are concerned. So as an example, using LinkedIn, um, my suggestion is part of the PACER methodology. And I guess just to touch on that and broaden that, what PACER actually stands for is platform authority, content, engagement, and revenue. So content plays a big part in my sales journey in, to, in dealing with uh, with prospects, and, and LinkedIn is a prime example of that. So uh, a portion of my, my working day is spent delivering content to my target audience, talking to my ideal client, um, via the likes of LinkedIn, for example, where I might be sharing a, uh, a relevant article that might be of use to my um, to my target audience, providing some particular insight um, that they might be able to get some use out of. So again, it highlights me at the top of their feeds and they get to see me in their feeds on a regular basis. Not pitching, not, um, uh, I guess, self-promoting, but literally doing my best to genuinely add value. And that comes from a content perspective. The second part of that is through engagement. What I've noticed a lot of salespeople do is that they're quite heavy on the content and they're prepared to post on various social media platforms on a regular basis, but they do need to mix up a combination of pitching, proposing, and uh, I guess what I've referred to as adding value by actually commenting on uh, com- commenting on other content from other people within their particular um, uh, customer demographic. So I believe it's what Gary calls Gary Vee calls the one dollar eighty strategy. So essentially what you want to be doing is spending no more than twenty minutes per day adding your two cents in terms of comments on posts by some of the people that you're actually looking to target because the more um, you'll be able to see be able to be seen by your target market, both in terms of adding value and engaging via comments via their various posts, you're going to be seen as a potential go-to person and you're going to be very much top of mind when they are in the right part of their buyer's cycle to actually engage with you to talk about, well, what is it that you can do for me? And, and I guess the last thing in relation to some of the messages that both you and I receive, um, never, ever, ever via social media go directly into the pitch. Quite frankly, what you want to be doing is sending a personalised connect message via the likes of LinkedIn as an example with no semblance of um, this is what I want to get from you. It should be very much centred on the uh, centered on the prospect. So whether that's sharing an insightful article, making sure that um, you, you actually refer to them by name as opposed to, hey there, and quite frankly, leave the proposal or the pitching part of the uh, the conversation so you've had the opportunity to nurture that opportunity and understand if this particular uh, this particular individual is somebody you'd like to do business with. And it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, building that platform, understand your customer, do your research and make sure that any reach to them is very much personalized and centered on their particular needs. Yeah, that's that's some really good advice. And I uh, like like you mentioned earlier, it's kind of human to human selling. If you think about it in that way, then it, yeah, if you just humanize, um, you know, the whole sales process, 
then it becomes much easier than sounding like a robot that's sending pitch after pitch to the same person. You know, it shouldn't be copy and paste. It should definitely be personalized. Um, so yeah, that was some really good advice. So Scott, I don't want to take too much of your time out of the day. You know, uh, you're probably a, a busy person. So my last and final question to you would be, um, to anybody that's listening right now, uh, you know, all the salespeople that we have that tune into our show, uh, what's one piece of advice that you can give to them that, you know, they can start right now that will take their game to the next level? Well, there's an expression that I've started to use quite frequently that I've become somewhat known for within the community of late, and that is honest conflict is more commercially valuable than dishonest harmony. And I guess to expand upon that thought, because we are in the age of human to human interaction, as opposed to the traditional B to C and B to B um, type sales scenarios, I think one of the key things that any prospect is looking for, regardless what they want to buy, and I include the likes of yourself and myself in this, is we want honesty and transparency from the people that uh, we decide to do business with. So with the latest research, for example, showing that um, buyers um, will generally only start to engage a salesperson directly when they're already about 65 to 70% in their buyer's journey. The earlier you get in front of those buyers where they're still in the uh, consideration phase will leave you top of mind when they're in the um, uh, when they're in their buyer's buyer's phase. And one of the things that they're looking for is something that, quite frankly, that they can't receive on the likes of Google or review sites. They want genuine commercial insight. So if you want to be able to be seen as somewhat credible and get your prospects to know, like, and trust you, which is vital, you do have to provide them with genuine commercial insight. And sometimes that means disagreeing with the customer and actually showing them a different way of doing things that takes them out of their comfort zone. For those salespeople that still really, quite frankly, think the customer is always right is not really the way that I look at things and not the way that I've been successful. The times where I've been most successful is where I've been able to highlight the way a potential prospect is thinking could be looked at differently and being genuinely honest with them and actually using my insight based on the work that I might have done with similar clients to actually provide some genuine value for them. So long story of it short, be honest, be transparent and actually help people because it's the right thing to do. And that will obviously stand you in good stead in the long term. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for, you know, that answer. And I want to thank you for coming on this podcast. And again, for everybody that's listening, I would really recommend that you guys go out and check out uh, Scott's new book. He can't give everything in this podcast. It would take too long. So definitely check out the book. It's called Seven Figure Sales Skills Selling to the Modern Customer. Um, and you, you really are going to learn things that are going to take your sales skills to that seven figure uh, you know, income, salary, whatever you're looking for. Uh, so Scott, I actually have one more question. Sorry about that. Uh, where can people get this book? Um, look, it's available via Amazon um, as we speak. So if you look for my name as the author, Scott Allen, or uh, look for seven sales skills, you'll be able to find it. And as I've said, the, um, the reviews that have come in so far have been uh, been quite positive. It's, it's rated five out of five on, on Amazon, which is... Um, quite humbling um which is which is fantastic but um yeah look i'd highly encourage any of your listeners who are looking to take your your selling ability especially in relation to what i refer to as the modern customer to the next level to uh to check out the book but it's available on amazon now okay awesome we're gonna go ahead and also link it in the description so you guys can check it out there and again scott Thank you for coming and thank you for providing some amazing insight into this world of sales and helping us, you know, really take our game to the next level. Okay, so there you guys have it. That's another episode of the Evil Salesman podcast. Like I said, if you guys don't want to miss out on, you know, our next amazing tip, 
our advice, our tricks, anything like that, or another amazing guest like Scott, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. Doesn't matter where you're listening to us on, subscribe is free and you'll be notified. Until next time, keep subbing.